What you got there, Aiden? You ready to meet j -Bot? J bot in the flesh, everybody. I got to grab it, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, but who's gonna ride it though? Who's gonna saddle it? <laughs> I mean, I know we had some jokes about it. Yeah. So I do have a saddle in the truck if that's okay. <laughs> that's All do you guys have to do to set up? So I mean, step one's easy. Drive J bot to where it's gotta go. Yeah. Then the very first time you set up any sort of space, you have to station the, the digital layout tool, station a total station. So for that, just like a normal total station, you hit two or three control points. Okay. And again, that's only the first time J bot's in space. So we'll, okay. we'll see whether we wanna do that right at the start or not. It's only drilling okay. a couple of holes. Yeah. Um, and then bring the boom arm up, press play, and you can start the drill. The beautiful part about J bot is, is that when you're using her, the only batteries that are being used are the actual ones that are operating the tool base. Everything is self-contained. So you'll see here the, the TE6A she used is using a battery that's actually hardlined directly into the main batteries of the unit, as well as her DRS system. Her DRS system as well is utilizing a battery that's hardlined directly into the power core of the tool. So you never have to worry about changing these out after so many holes or anything like that. The only thing you have to worry about is changing your drill bit or changing the HEPA bag on your vacuum. Everything else, you don't have to worry about the vacuum shutting off or anything like that. If she's working, it's working. Because you have your marking system here, this is your painting system. This allows you to mark your holes depending on which trade is using what hole. All of it is self-contained there. It's where your, all your paint goes, your primer, everything that you need. While she's doing that, inside your rear compartment here, She's actually charging all of the other batteries for all the pieces outside of the tool. So these are extra 18 volt batteries for your PLT head unit. You have extra batteries for the controller for JBot, that yellow controller. You also have an extra battery and a cradle for your tablet for the PLT for its operating system. And then you have some extra batteries and 12 volt batteries for some of the smaller products that we use for aligning and quality control and quality assurance. So everything is running while JBot is on. So she charges everything up while she's going. Single charge, you'll have eight hours worth of work on it. I mean, a little bit more depending on how many holes you're drilling, a little bit less depending on how far you're driving. How far is the reach? Uh, the reach is 16 and a half feet up. Her operating range is from eight and a half to 16 and a half feet up. And JBOT's actual area of drilling is a six foot diameter. So the center of this mast is her, is her center point. And she will go three feet out and back over and over from that point. So that circle starts here at your center point, right in the middle of that. I mean, part of what makes JBOT so cool is it is designed to be a partner for the worker on the job site. And a big part of that is that JBOT's a cobot or a collaborative robot. So within robotics, you've got different types of robotic arms. A particular, par or a particular type of those are collaborative robotic arms. And by being a collaborative robotic arm, it means that JBOT can be used in and around workers, say, without being caged off. Um, workers, you know, are designed to be with JBOT on the slab, they don't have to work in a designated area. And that involves a bunch of different safety features. You know, you see the protective stop, so when the arm is moving and it collides with something, the robotic arm stops away before it causes any major damage. Uh, the speed is limited so that it doesn't move too fast. It's got incorporated safety planes so that the arm doesn't, you know, swing around unpredictably when it's around workers. Um, and that's all part about making JBOT just a usable construction tool, not a, a you know, a, a autonomous robot designed for uh, controlled environments, right? JBOT's yeah. not that, it's, it's a prism pole that drills. So, all right, go through the autonomous versus semi-autonomous there, because I, I, I think I got that confused myself. Yeah. I started thinking JBOT was a fully autonomous thing that I could just let run and it'll drill everything, so it's yeah. not... Oh. No, not at all. So JBOT is semi-autonomous. So JBOT always requires an operator, and the operator plays a really important role. One, they move uh, JBOT around the job site. So the base platform in JBOT will not move without an operator working those controls. Uh, two, they perform the really important role of you know, QA, QC. We all know that the digital model will never exactly fit what's been designed in the field, particularly when you're working with concrete and steel, right? You can have quite significant deviations. You can also have elements that haven't been modeled correctly, right? So there's always an element of 
clash or um, infield adjustments that need to be made. And the operator can also make those on the fly. They can move all locations, they can send feedback to the office, uh, they can you know, generate RFIs so that they can ensure that uh, what's being installed is exactly what needs to be installed for uh, the pre to meet the prefabrication or planning or whatever whatever has to be done. Um, JWAT becomes autonomous when it's been positioned. That boom has been brought up to the right uh, to the right height, and at that point, once the operator presses play, JWAT will autonomously drill all of the holes it can reach within a six foot diameter. So at that point, JWAT reaches out, locates, marks, and drills those holes. And then when it's finished, everything it can reach. The arm comes back to center position, the operator moves JBOT to the next drilling location. Anyone who's familiar with Hilti will immediately know when they hear the name JBOT that it's not typical for, for Hilti to have a, a tool that's named that way. Um, so JBOT obviously is a, has a three letter acronym, so it stands for Jobs at Artificial Intelligence. Um, however, it was important for us that when we uh, named JBOT, we named it as a construction partner, as a tool that you know a worker on a job site can relate to. Right? It's meant to be your buddy. It's meant to be you know the the helper that means you don't have to be up and down a ladder, drilling holes all day. So it was important that we gave JBOT a name that was relatable. Right? That could, that contractors could um, could really get behind. Mm. You done? That wasn't an hour. <laughs> All right, so Eddie was 12.41.05 and the J-Bot was three minutes, 30 seconds. That is how many holes, 15? Yes. 15 holes, uh, half inch deep and uh, half inch diameter. Yes. So, yeah. Now, how it's many post-game interview? <laughs> how many of you are getting that level of production? Yeah, I'm hoofing. I mean, he is hoofing it. No construction. And so order let's order. say that he let's say that he can do that in the first hour of the day. Yeah, I couldn't right? do that again. Though. Okay, that's the thing, right? So, brand new, fresh out of the box, right? J Bot is going to work as hard on the first hole as she does on the last. Hole. Your production rate's going to be the same. Your safety's going to be the same. Your hole quality is going to be the same. Because you did those 15 holes, and let's say every one of them was done perfect perpendicular. What happens when you get the hole 150? Yeah, I'm not. Can you get the hole 150 in a day? Right. At a, cer I, at a certain point, you're going to start. <laughs> Dude, I'm you, probably, you sweat I'm through your t-shirt. Right, I'm probably spent by then. Um, I can tell you my accuracy level was probably eighth to a quarter of an inch, and I'm only drilling half inch holes. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was work, that was real work. Ready? Good start. <laughs> Just rub some salt in the wound. That is the easiest hole you've drilled all day. All right, Eddie. Um, so you failed to beat the, beat the robot. No surprises. No surprises there. <laughs> all in all. Walk me through what you had to do. So, like, where were you bogging down? Was it the layout? Was it the drilling? What was it? Yeah, well, you have to remember, too, that Hilti brought a couple of other tools that I was using. Um, the exoskeleton was helping me out. About 15 pounds of pressure as I was going over my head. Uh, I also had the exact same hammer drill that is in the actual J-Bot. So we were using the exact same hammer drill, exact same bit, the whole bit. They provided all that. I also had a laser plumb bob that I was using um, that had uh, helped me project all of my points up into the ceiling. Uh, but we had pre-laid out all of those points on the floor and then you know cleared them and everything like that. So there was a lot involved in the layout of j just Okay, I've got to I've got to put lines on the floor. I got to project those up in the ceiling, and then once I got up there, this were, I mean, if you've ever used a hammer drill before, that thing wants to kind of bounce when you first start it because that hammer kicks in. 
So you're like plus or minus an eighth, a quarter. I mean, you start eating into that thing in the wrong spot. It's very hard to come over half of a hole and adjust. Um, so you're fighting some things, but that just doesn't fight. It just, it keeps equal pressure. It's directly on point. It's reading the CAD file. Layout's already done. You're just doing all of this processing in the office, and it's pretty dang hard to to do anything to better that. And the office, dude, like, it's clean. You can knock it out really quick. It's easy to lay out points in the office. Out here in the field, like, it was taking you a solid, I, I don't know, maybe two, three minutes per point that you laid out versus what we already had preloaded in the JPEG. So I was talking to Aiden a minute ago. There's things below the iceberg, like, time to rework something that the human didn't lay out right the thing you know just the accuracy thing um the jbot's ability to recoil if it senses that it's about to hit rebar i mean it just there are some things that that will do that are kind of below the surface that i wouldn't so when you're doing that roi study you also have to consider the productivity of what didn't happen which is one of the big things with bim and technology is how do you assess the value of what didn't happen yeah. uh, if it's laying everything out perfectly and your job goes smoothly you get through your critical path faster and that's the main goal and that's worth money too Oh yeah, for sure, for sure.